hi guys how are you this wonderful wonderful saturday morning i hope you have slept well i hope you have woken up well my name is nashipai but my friends call me nash and i thank the lord for the father that he has brought me i am born again i am the child of the most high god and today i have purpose to share my testimony with you guys because um a lot of people have gone through a lot before i became born again there is something that i went through and i became born again and i hope through my story you guys will get encouraged those who still have wounds god will heal you those who are still contemplating about giving their lives to christ they will choose jesus at the end of the day all for the glory and honor of god so <laughs> i don't know where to begin exactly but i'm going to start when i was a kid um i was born to a normal family uh both to my mom and dad I was the third born out of three children. I don't like calling myself a last born because I don't see myself as an egg. Last borns they are called my eye, yeah, eggs. So I really had I was born to a really hard working family. These guys used to my dad and mom that is they would work and provide for us. They were so hard working but uh, my childhood um we were not very spiritual. I come from a Catholic background and uh we didn't used to really be very committed to going to church so i didn't really know god that much but uh my life mm, started changing when i was 4 years old that is where like i i i grew up in a place where we are not so many kids playing around so if i used to get kids to play around because i grew up in teachers quarters my mom was a teacher so one teachers quarters to another was far but we had some neighbors that i used to play with and i really liked going to their home they would come to our home so one day the elder brother um he decided you know what let's play another different game and uh he told me he, i climbed on the bed and uh so i did and i obeyed you know one thing about kids kids are very innocent and they are very 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 obedient when you tell them to do something they do but it is all out of innocence so i climbed and then he started telling me that he wants to touch me and then i was like deep down you know romans 2:15 says that uh laws are written in the hearts of men so i was a bit skeptical like what is he trying and i kept on telling him i'm scared i'm scared and then he was like just close your eyes i'm not going to do anything you just close your eyes and i was like because kids are generally obedient i obeyed and then he touched me inappropriately i still have something to thank god for it didn't go all the way to rape because he was still young but that touching somehow something wasn't right okay in the physical it just looks okay it's just normal ni kawaida but in the spiritual that kind of touching opens a door to us to a, to, a, to in the spiritual realm to a to a um sexual immorality kind of thing so i thought okay i i wasn't after that i went back home and I, i i got a bit mixed emotions like i don't understand what has just happened but i was like anyway i didn't tell anyone i didn't even tell my mom i didn't even tell my anybody I just kept quiet and kept it to myself and that is when i realized this is what the enemy does he takes away your voice you want to say but you cannot say you want to talk and you want to tell your mom or your dad what has gone on but you can't he like he like takes away your voice and your you cannot say your no and um uh, i just went on with life but the touching okay it didn't happen with the neighbor's kid again but it kept on happening different places it happened with relatives happened in school and the one that was the most uncomfortable was a house help Yeah she used to sometimes because uh, I was young ningeka na yeye kwa bed so that one was the most weird one and that is why some of you as I'm talking you can relate to this there is incest it is something that is a secret in the family but there's a lot of incest that goes on there's a lot of house elves who have abused kids sexually And at this point when I'm in class 2 I I like felt normal like inikawaida this thing just keeps on happening so I think this is 
normal so i ne- it never used now to to condemn you or anything i was used to this kind of things now because it happens severely i thank god still that it didn't proceed to rape because rape is another case but i still don't justify that it was good because it came to affect me as i grew up remember a door was opened in the spiritual realm the moment that first assault happened that sexual assault as i was a child and anyway i moved on with life happened in school again with another girl now and that is how you know if i didn't come to be born again at this point after everything i've gone through as i will share perhaps I would have ended up as a lesbian because of the house help and because of this other girl that she was with in school and uh, I continued um, my saving grace oh that moment that really saved me was in class 6 in class 6 I was taken to a boarding school and a boarding school by the name Good Samaritan oh that school that school is why I am born again right now it was my saving grace moment and I thank God for taking me to that boarding school because it was number one based on a Christian foundation we used to really worship in that school we used to read the word we used to sing hymns and all that and even at primary level we used to have weekend challenges that is how awesome it was and even though I never told anyone or anything but I went to this school I just something just in me shifted I started seeing God in a different way remember the background I've come from is not very spiritual so I didn't know much about God also the catholic ways I'm not against catholics I love catholics but I don't really connect to the whole system and the rituals but anyway that is my story and um uh, when I went to this school I just loved the free worship you know we would go and worship in a service and I really it was a new experience for me and I was like I love this I love how I, there is freedom in worship you know the bible says there is freedom where the holy spirit is there was freedom in worship there was a lot of good things and I really thank god for that and then I remember now in class 6 that time they see steam that came oh wherever they are god bless them their name was soul builders and when soul builders came to our school i remember we had a weekend challenge with them we were with them the whole of this that saturday and then on on saturday evening at night after we had eaten our supper they came and then they taught us the word of god and then i remember how passionate the guy who was ministering was how passionate he was about Christ about salvation even to the point he shed the tears and i remember with that conviction in my heart I think that day the three quarter of the hall if not a hundred of them all a hundred percent lifted their hands up everybody just gave their lives to Christ and I was so excited oh my goodness we used to go we used to fast together I remember I I got three friends I call them the three musketeers I mean we used to pray we used to fast with these girls we would pray for our families and i remember on sundays we didn't used to have classes in the morning so we would go to an upper room there was an upper room in that school me and my three friends we would pray pray for our families and i started growing spiritually but the thing that i missed out during that time is i didn't know much about the holy spirit i didn't know about his baptism you know even kids can get baptized with the holy spirit it is not that you reach a certain age as long as you know about christ as long as you receive salvation the next thing someone should do is receive the holy spirit it is one of the most awesome things that anyone anybody can experience so i remember after that ah it was just awesome but there's were also problems began in my life so i started getting sick in this school i mean every time i used to almost go home because of stomach infection something right now by then i didn't understand what was happening but by now i now understand that it was war you know the enemy started waging war against me because when you have a big destiny as some of you as i'm sharing you are like i have gone through a lot since we come toto i have been going through so much things it's because you carry greatness when you're a kid and you're born into this world and you carry greatness you will go battles from the moment you're young to the moment even continually with life so if you're out there and you're one of those people who go through so much battles and you're wondering what have you done wrong no you happen to have a big destiny and god loves you so much amen so i go uh, i remember in one of the appointments my mom is one who used to take me to hospital but this time she was not available so she sent my bro to take me to hospital 
So, <laughs> unfortunately, wow, my brother now took me to a perverted doctor. Even he didn't know he was perverted. It's just like, take a, uh, my, they talked to my mom. My mom told him, go and take my the, the name. Go and take your sister to a certain to a certain building and you'll find a doctor there for kids. Little did did I know that the doctor I was going to find there is a perverted doctor. So I have had all these things happening to me since childhood. Now I've gotten a break. I'm in a school where it is like my good Samaritan. And then I get this perverted doctor and it just it felt like I there were these unseen hands pulling me behind like you know why what do you think you're doing here with your salvation at and all that like you belong to this kind of life so i really felt bad i felt violated because he was taking the stethoscope on my breast one from another i don't know if the heartbeat is usually there again he was checking me down there so i was like hey. and that is why if you are out there and you're a mom there's a reason why god created you to be snoopy it is a gift from God. It is part of the intuition. Because every time I used to go with my mom to the clinic, she used to be there with the doctor looking, looking. Hey, okay, what are you doing, doctor? Okay, eh, uh -huh, uh -huh, what's the problem? How many cases? You know, you were created like that. And that is why it's better you take your kids yourself to the doctor. I know there is a lot of working women, career women and all that. But when it comes to your kids, it's better off you be with them in such situations because you never know the kind of doctor they might encounter. They might encounter a perverted doctor, which is such a sad thing because that's what I encountered. Again, because my no, you know, since I was a kid, the word no was taken away from me. Because every time something like that would happen, people will tell you, no, too. don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody about this. So the voice no was taken away from me. I couldn't face this doctor. Now I was 12 years old. But I couldn't face him and say no. Because of everything that I had gone through. And because the enemy has a way to muzzle people and take their no away. So that is why don't be asking, oh, why? Why didn't you say no? Why didn't you do this? No. Sometimes it's people who would wish to speak out, but they feel like they are no or their voice has been taken out so anyway continue with my testimony so my mom she just got worried i mean i'm getting sick and then the performance of that school you know when the enemy was just mad at that school because of the rate it was converting kids into christians so the enemy started fighting the management so there was a problem in the management and then teachers started leaving so performance started going down and then i was getting sick so my mom was like no let me try to take you to another school and I remember I really cried. I was like, Mom, I don't want to come out of this school. But my mom was like, look at you, you're always getting sick. I'm worried. I want to take you to another school. So eventually I did go to another school. Although I really loved Good Samaritan, even it was such a good school that the discipline, disciplinary cases there were not many because when you build a school on the basis of Christianity, there are so many things that even parents, even the school will not deal with because God is in control in such a school. So I went to another school. I was now in class 7 that time. And this school, to be honest, it was a bad Samaritan. I don't even call it by its real name. It was just a bad Samaritan to my soul. Because in this school, uh, my mom found out that I had converted from Protestant, from Catholic into Protestant and she was like, hey, so my mom got so mad. She was like, hey, no, if I find you, I've gone to Protestant. I will come myself and I will eat you with my teeth. I don't know why African parents like using that uh, joke. Like, I don't know, that threat of eating you alive. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, no. So I decided, okay, let me obey my mom. And then in this school, ah, the girl who used to bully me in primary, I didn't mention, but there was this girl who used to bully me in primary a lot. She ended up becoming my best mate. And then after that, there was this nicknaming I was called my former school because I kept on talking about my former school until the extent they nicknamed me. Here comes my former school. But I didn't understand the kind of relationship that I had with my former school anyway. But um, I really had a hard time fitting into this school. 
other than the other school I had many friends I had a nice environment a praying environment even my performance I used to get 400 marks and above remember in the other school I used to fast I used to pray there was the three musketeers but now I don't have that anymore so I started going down spiritually and that is why what is being spoken in Hebrews chapter 10 it is true that fellowship is very important as believers we are not meant to be alone we are meant to have fellowship and I really, really, really missed that out in school. I started going to back to Catholic and all that. And then I didn't used to get very sickly. So when I turned 14 years, I was nine class eight. And um, there was this thing that started happening. I now started gaining another struggle in my life. And this one was filled with shame and filled with guilt. Remember at four years old, there was a door that was open in my life through the sexual assault. So when I got at 14 years, it's what, it, now the door became bigger now. Because now when I started my periods, it's like I promoted whatever that was hindering, that I had um, started um, destroying my life at four years. So I began struggling with masturbation out of nowhere. I had never done such a thing. It just started out of nowhere and I remember shame and guilt and condemnation really used to fill me up and that is where I started struggling with low self-esteem and self-hatred. I really hated myself because I was doing what I don't want to do. It's like something used to come, take control over me until I masturbate and then after I finish it leaves me alone and now I have to deal with all those emotions of the conscience condemning you there's condemnation and all that and i remember i was really 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 sad i was so sad and i used i never used to tell anybody remember i had been muzzled since i was young by the enemy because secrecy is the breeding ground of sin the moment the enemy takes away that and makes you to muzzle it now becomes something that it had to come out and starts developing you know it is a door and now the door is getting wider and wider and wider yeah so fast forward to i finished class eight the struggle was once in a while it used to come and then it goes it comes and then it goes right now is when i understand it was there is a sp it was a spirit there was a spirit behind the whole masturbation thing, the whole assault thing. Right now is when I'm understanding that, but by then I didn't understand what was going on. And that is why some of you have struggled with things and you're like, what did I do? I don't understand why I'm struggling with this. Sometimes when you have a big destiny, the enemy will try to shut you off in each and every way. So moving on, I did manage to finish class eight. I thank God. I went, I proceeded to high school. Form one went along well. The masturbation issue was still there. Once in a while, it hadn't gotten to the level of addiction yet. It used to come and then go, come and then go. So at form two, there was this girl who got transferred to our school. So the teacher was like, Nash, uh, I would like for you to take this girl and show her through the curriculum of school, you know, just like being a custodian. Of somebody and she became my best mate. so we became fast friends besides that we were neighbors at home so we, we really bonded a lot and uh one day you know now already the, there is already the sexual immorality seed in my life so i started one day she used to talk and talk and then she told me about pornography and then i got um curious like okay pornography okay so she would tell me about pornography so i really got very curious and then i was like okay then we tried this whole thing that she's telling me to watch. So it was in August form two. So that August I went home. She gave me the DVD and then I came with it at home. So when I came with it at home, you know, I was so innocent and I was so naive. So I came carrying a DVD and then the, the house help at that time, she asked me, what is that that you have in your hand? I told her, my friend has told me it is pornography. So she took it from my hands and then she came and placed it inside uh, the decor and then we started watching with her. Oh God, forgive me. <laughs> because of bringing a cast object at home. But anyway, we started watching with her and uh, my first reaction to watching porn, to be honest, I was shocked. I just sat there and I was frozen. Like, I was so shocked. It's like, 
you're being hit by shockwaves and I was like okay whoa and then I will tell her should we remove and I said no 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 let's watch let us continue watching so eventually after the film ended I remember I I took it took it, I I placed the CD inside its sleeve and I took it to my bedroom and I was like I will never watch pornography again so the next day I took the 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 DVD and I was like I'm taking it back to her I don't want anything to do with pornography because it was a very shocking thing for to expose my eyes but truth be told already the damage was done 